And now, from the CFTK TV studios, this is Open Connection with your host, Robert Picto. Welcome to Open Connection. I'm your host, Robert Picto. In a region of great natural resources, the indigenous people of the Northwest Coast develop a comfortable and sophisticated societies marked by social ranking, elaborate ceremonial life, and spectacular art created to celebrate the history and the prestige of families, clans, and lineages. On today's Open Connection, Stan Bevan. My father is from Kitslas Simshian uh, here in Terrace. Uh, my mother is Teltan Clinkett from Telegraph Creek. Uh, but I was born and raised in, in Terrace, BC, and grew up with the, in the Simshian Nation of Kitsilas. I enjoyed uh, drawing, drawing cartoons. I liked hanging out with the, 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 the kids that knew how to draw well and admired what they did. And in high school, I was able to uh, take all the woodwork uh, courses because I really enjoyed working with wood. And then by the age of 15, I was in, uh, went to Prince Rupert to work do some workshops with my uncle and got introduced to First Nations uh, art. And when I graduated a couple years later, I got the invitation to go to Kassan and Hazleton. And that's how I got interested in, in really doing the art, is, is, is that course in Hazleton that gave me the opportunity to, to really uh, focus in and start learning First Nations art. And before I started, I, I phoned up my uncle and I said, is it okay if I apprentice with you if I take this course? And he, he had no problem with that, so, so that's how I got started. A year later, I was invited with, with my uncle to Alaska to work on one of his major projects. Uh, I think it was a 30-foot totem pole. And we spent about five months in, in Alaska working on that pole. And that really brought me into making art a career. Uh, be before that, I was... I, I had opportunities of, of logging. I, I did some did some helicopter logging, and when I went to Alaska with Dempsey to to inquire, when he was inquiring about the pole, the the, the, the crew was in Alaska, and they, they said, "Do you want to come to work?" So I had the uh, had the option of working on the totem pole or going back to logging, and logging was good money back then. So I thought, no, I think I'll stick with the pole, and and, and, and that's was got me on my career of being an artist. Kassan in the north was uh, very important in the, in the early years of, of um, establishing the art again. It's where, where a lot of um, artists gathered, whether they were instructors or whether they were students and, and went on to be established artists. But Kassan really got uh, the art started here in the north. So there was uh, my instructor when I went to Kassan in 79 was Vernon Stevens. And he, he was a, a very uh, established uh, artist through Kassan. And, and many of them, at that time when I went to Kassan, uh, many of the first instructors had, had left and, and went on to do their own careers like uh, Earl Maldo and Walter Harris and Ken Mowat. So, so, so they, they, they had a big part in, 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 in starting the art and, and a big part in, in me understanding where, where I stood in, in the art world. Apprenticeship is very important because it's, uh, uh, we, we, we teach by hands-on. You, 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 you actually have to, when I'm teaching, I teach uh, by how I was taught. So when I, when I learned, my work was half done by, by my uncle. He would take the, the work and he'd work on it and he'd have to sit there and watch and then he'd hand it over and then you'd You'd uh, copy what he just finished, and, and then you'd go home and do your own work and work on it and bring it back, and then he'd study it and, and give you advice. And that's pretty well how we teach at the at the, at the Free to Deason School is is hands on. So it's a, it's a, actually a lot of work teaching because you're having to do half at least half of the the work that the students are doing. So, but I, I found it very uh, rewarding. Well, I learned a lot by, by working with a lot of students and, and helping them bring the, the work out. The Free to Dean School, was, it's, it's a great opportunity for uh, established, well, artists that have already started or artists that are beginning because what we do is we bring them back to the fundamentals. We, 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 get, we bring them through the beginning and then help them through because some artists miss, when they're learning privately, they, they miss some areas 
And when they come to the school, we start them right from the beginning and we bring them through the process of, 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 of learning the art. And, and we try to make sure that they're learning the fundamentals well, because once the fundamentals are learnt, uh, it's, it's easier for you to teach yourself. It's easier to, to catch on to how the art works. And once you catch on how the art works, then you can become creative. I was encouraged when I was learning to, to study the old pieces because uh, they, 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 are, they were so far ahead of what we are now because we had to go back and learn everything over again and, and bring it back up to the standards of, of, our, of our ancestors. Uh, we will never bring it to their standards, We'll develop it in a different way, but we will bring it up to the to the the, the values and, and the, the the way it's 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 treated and looked at in in, in the in the culture. So the, the old stuff is like uh, like our universities. It's it's there. It's 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 uh, the best way of learning. I'm always studying old pieces. Open connection. We'll be right back after these messages. And now, from the CFTK TV studios, this is Open Connection with your host, Robert Picto. Thank you for staying with us. Roughly translated as Under the Wave Kanagawa, it is widely known as the Great Wave. It is one of 36 prints made by Japanese printmaker Katsuigawa Hokusai. Let us return to the conversation as Stan shares how a trip to Japan inspired him to do woodblock prints. Got uh, a visitors from um, Japan, and one of them was a printmaker, and he and uh, and uh, that group invited me to Japan for a, a, a workshop, and I was able to travel around with the, the printmaker, and I was able to see the traditional printmakers in Japan, and which got me back in, back interested in in, in wanting to develop uh, woodblock printing. So I came home and and I sort of tried to teach myself through YouTube and I, I tried to learn everything I could off, off YouTube and, and in the Japanese woodcut uh, technique and it, it, I, I got so far I was and, and I just wasn't happy with what, what I was producing at, at the early like 2012, 2013 I was uh, just starting to produce a few works and, and I wasn't quite happy so I, I Flew around with it every few months. I'd flew around, try get the, the look that I wanted, and then it wasn't until a few years ago that uh, through the Free to Dean School we had a, a workshop with a printmaker. And he came up from uh, Vancouver, uh, Lawrence Lower. He was a, a former teacher at the Emily Carr, a printmaker at the Emily Carr teacher. And what I was trying to learn and what he was telling me started clicking, and I started figuring out how. Uh, things should work and how, how the best way for for me to produce prints and it was a combination of what I was learning and, and, uh, and his uh, I, instruction of, of how it should be done in the proper way the papers the ink uh, the printing and, and I also at that time teaching yourself is good but but I found out how important it is to have a teacher and that that's that's that's, that's the, the one area that I really uh, enjoyed was, was having a, a teacher and somebody I still can ask questions to if I need to. So, so once, once I had that figured out, I had the designs, I had everything ready to go with, with the previous work and study that I was uh, putting into the prints. So once, once I had the, the technique down and, and, and I started producing and, and it's been a couple of years now that I've been producing uh, prints and and as I produce them, I get more and more ideas. So, so there's there's lots to do. Just like just like with in the the carving part of my career, I, there's just limitless uh, amount of work that you can ideals and work that you can do. The technique of carving is the same technique of carving that I use for 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 working on my own art. And uh, but but the the ideal of printing was. And match and, and printing with colors was it was a challenge. It was you have to be clean with the cuts and lines, but your background doesn't have to be clean. And that's I found that a little easier than, than like two-dimensional uh, sculpture and plaques and, and panels and things like that, where the whole thing's got to be clean. You know, with the with the uh, woodcut, you're, you're just cleaning what you're going to print, and then you're and you're pushing away the waste wood. 
And so I found that when I wanted to use two colors, I found that a challenge because you're, you're, you're thinking how to align these colors. And, and when I first, uh, uh, my first uh, print I, I, I did with colors, I did a three color print and I wanted to challenge myself to, to match, to line up three colors. And I, I, I used the, uh, the, the Japanese uh, style of uh, aligning prints up. And my first print was, uh, went quite well. It, it actually turned out that uh, it, it, it uh, all lined up and I was quite pleased. And I went on to my more doing other prints. And for some reason they were all off and I, I couldn't figure it out. It took me took me probably a few weeks to f to figure out what was going on, and then I just realized I was thinking in reverse, so I had to start <laughs> had to go back and, and, and do it all over again. And, and which now now I feel comfortable that I that I can start lining things up. But you never know because every time you do something, it's it, it's a new challenge. Printmaking uh, it's well it's a, it's a very old uh, uh, technique. It's been used for hundreds of years. And it's, it's, it's a simple process of, of carving the wood and then inking the wood and then laying, laying your paper in and then pressing the, the design into the wood. It's, it's simple in that way, but it's actually a lot of work. There's, there's a, quite the process to, to printing, from sizing your paper to getting your design to carving your design to printing. Each print is hand printed, so it's not like you're uh, printing, so you're pressing, pressing my hand. Each each piece, each design is pressed in, and for colored ones, it's each color is uh, carved on a different block, and then the the print is printed. Uh, each color is printed uh, individually, and the color, the ink that I use, takes five days to dry. So, for a three colored print, that's three weeks of work. For, for one print, but you do it in a series, so you do a series of 10, and so you, so you end up with 10 prints with uh, three colors after three weeks, so it's, it's quite, quite the process, so it's, it's a simple technique, but it's, it's a process that uh, patience, you have to have patience, so. Open Connection will be right back after these messages. And now, from the CFTK TV studios, this is Open Connection with your host, Robert Picto. Welcome back to Open Connection. In Northwest Coast art, the form line is the positive delineating force of painting, relief, and engraving. Form lines are continuous flowing lines that turn and swell and diminish in a prescribed manner. Let us rejoin the conversation as Stan describes the elements in one of his woodblock prints. What's nice about wood woodcut prints is in, in the first in, in uh, Northwest Coast is that it's a different technique, so you can use you can do bring it out uh, in a different style. So, so I, I didn't want to. There's there's already so many um, fantastic uh, artists in silk screening, and, and I didn't want to and I didn't want to just make silk screening woodcut into silk screen. So I wanted to to try and uh, bring out the new techniques and. Uh, a new style and something that's uh, unique for, 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 for the art. So, so, so I started creating uh, designs that were um, ideals that I had in my book, in my, in my sketchbooks for, for years and, and a lot of the, the sketches were just sketches and, and, and no way of um, uh, using them in, 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 in certain areas of the art. So once I developed uh, working in the woodcut style, I was able to uh, bring these sketches out in, 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 a, in a different technique in, in woodcut. So, so the, the, the Raven Beauty is, is my last print that I, that I completed. And I wanted to do another comb because my first print was a comb print. And so I had the idea of, of I wanted to, uh, to do another comb print. So uh, I, as, as I as I worked on it and um, and figuring out the design to it, and then and then I was going to just call it Raven Comb, Raven's Comb. But but after a while, I, I thought it'd be because it's a comb, I might as well call it Raven Beauty. So so that's how it, the, the name developed into uh, calling it Raven Beauty. It's been been fun working on, on, on these on these designs because they're, they're 
I'm, now that I'm understanding what can be done with with the uh, uh, woodcut, I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to uh, get more and uh, more ideas to to developing these these designs and and hopefully create interest in in, in in a new technique in the art. This this print here, it's it's it's. You can see the two-dimensional, and then you can see the sculpture. So if this was sculpted out, it, this, this face would be sculpted in, in, a, in a, like a like a mask or a totem pole face, and this would be sculpted out like a like a like a like a totem pole. But it's put into two-dimensional, and and it bring what brings it back to Northwest Coast is the the, the shapes like the uh, the the ovoids and, and the U shapes and the, the T shapes and, and the eyes. So, so as it's coming out into sculpture, it's still holding, holding its uh, uh, Northwest Coast style and image. The, the piece of wood that I had at the time, it looked like it would fit a nice comb design. So, so I, I started with, a, with the comb and it was at my first experiment with, with, the, with the art. So. I wanted something fairly simple. I didn't want to do lots of work and, and get disappointed. So I just started with something simple and, and I, I continued it on in, in different uh, versions. So I got a, the version one as the original and then I used the version two, three, and four and each of them is 25 editions. But I, I d developed the, the different versions because it's a small print. It's a small uh, comb version print. And when I'm working, I got leftover paper, I got leftover ink, so so I just started making smaller versions of the, of uh, the, the comb. So which works out that not only am I getting new additions, but I'm I'm not wasting my paper and I'm not wasting my ink. So so it's it's a, just a it's just a nice way of uh, uh, developing your own prints because as a, if you were to go out and do it as a silk screen, you'd you'd have to pay for the different colors and pay for all the different setups. So doing it as yourself, as an artist, you've, you've got that opportunity to, to create different, different ways of, of bringing out prints. Open Connection will be right back after these messages. And now from the CFTK TV studios, this is Open Connection with your host, Robert Picto. Native people of the Northwest Coast region enjoy an abundance of sea life to help sustain their economies and diets. Though halibut and shellfish are the mainstay of many coastal nations, the most important species in their collective identities, cultures, and relationships with other nations continues to be salmon. In this final segment of Open Connection, Stan shares why first salmon and is important. This one's uh, entitled First Salmon, so, so I had the design and from it's an old design that I, that I re, redid and, and brought out to to make to work as a as a as a woodcut print. And what what the and after it was completed, I had to, to title it and 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 um, I, t I titled it first salmon because uh, uh, the, when the first salmon come back, uh, everybody everybody it's, it's an exciting time for the people. It's it's a time of sharing, so that they, when they catch their first salmon they, they, they don't keep it for themselves they they divide it amongst their family and friends and they, and they share so that's that's what this this uh, print is about is uh, when the first salmon come back and and, and how ex exciting it is for the people and and for them to to be able to share their 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 salmon with with their friends and family this one's titled the dependence and it's a it was a Quick sketch I did years ago in, in my sketchbook, and and had no idea what, what it was going to be until until I started woodblock printing, and and uh, what what it is is it's, it's an eagle, a, a bear, and a human, and two salmon, and I call it the dependence because uh, uh, each it's very it's, it's important for for everybody and the the animals and the humans. In the, in the in the north, that they, that salmon is what they depend on, and, and just that the, the importance that that um, salmon is to the people. So I call it the, the dependence because we're all dependent on on the salmon. It occurs through through our through our stories and our history, and the the, the the ideals. Some of them are contemporary, but but 
even though they're contemporary, they come from from our our history and our our, our tie to our ties to the to the land and ties to our, our people. This uh, print was uh, um, purchased by a gallery in Vancouver, the Fazakis Gallery, and they uh, then sold sold it to um, the. Um, Natural History Museum in New York, and uh, I got a letter from the from the museum in New York stating that they were going because they're renovating their their museum, and they're going to be having a, an opening in the, the fall. And with the purchase of the, the print, they're having a, a contemporary uh, exhibit in in, be, in the in the front of the of the opening, and and they they, they said that they really. Uh, enjoyed the, the contemporary style of the of the print, and, and they they were going to show it in this exhibit. So I'm, I was quite honored to be participating in the in an exhibit for the Natural History Museum in New York. Bentwood boxes were uh, common through the whole uh, north uh, through BC. But everybody had boxes, and they you know they were storage. They were they stored food. They stored. Uh, Regalia, and they were traded. They, they, were, they, were, they were quite common for, for everybody to have boxes. Most families still have um, old boxes. I, I have four from, from my grandmother. When we teach at the, at the Frida Dees School, we get the students to do renditions of boxes because, because the boxes are, uh, they are so um, complex with, with their designing and, and there's so much to learn. If you, if you can figure out those boxes, uh, you, you, you can start understanding how the art works. Take the advice that I give the students, as, 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 as we talked about earlier, that how important the, the, the old pieces are, the pieces in the museums and, and our, our ancestors' work and, and, and what they did. They're, they're so so I'm, I'm learning as, as I'm working. So this one's hard to tell because the rendition, there's no description of what what it was, it's a, it's, a, it's a clinket abstract box design, and there's there's a ovoids and eyes, and so without uh, actually somebody telling you the story and why it was created, it would be very difficult to to say that it's this or that. But it's 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 what caught my eyes is that because of that, because it's unique and it's it's designed in such a, a masterful way that that that, that I wanted to. Uh, work on it and figure it out and make it into a print. Bending the rules comes with years and years of experience. So, uh, but it is possible once once you once you understand the fundamentals well, uh, you can bend the rules because it still has that Northwest Coast connection. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Ultra Connection. The greatest distance in the existence of man is not from here to there, but the connection to his mind to his heart. If we can conquer that distance, we can soar like an eagle and realize our immensity within. I'm Robert Picta.